This is the moment like I felt like I missed Taiwan after like, you know, 10 minutes being home. So there is not too many places in a world like this. Surround yourself with people who have good beliefs. If you surround yourself with this kind of people who don't want to do anything, any improvement, you're going to come up shortly with some beliefs like, yes, this is bad, everybody's wrong, the government sucks, mm -hmm. people are racist. Mm -hmm. First time I came to Taiwan, I felt like I've been here all my life already. My name is Amade, a Chinese is An De, An Chien De, An De Guo De De. I come from Poland and I've been to Taiwan like 11 years and I came here to take photos and videos. Before coming to Taiwan, mm -hmm. did you know about Taiwan? Yes, because uh, there was a Taiwanese government, I think around 2011 or something, organized the kind of competition that if you come to Taiwan and plan your trip, like what do you want to do here? Maybe if you're lucky, you're going to win the lottery and they're going to pay you for the trip. But you have to make interesting, you know, research and like where you want to go. So then I figured it out about all those hot springs and like nature. But obviously, you know, that was like a little part, but mostly Taiwan for me is like, okay, I, in a high school, I love bicycles, like riding bikes and like mountain bikes made in Taiwan. Okay, I love, you know, computers. Okay, everything you put inside your PC, made in Taiwan, made in Taiwan, made in Taiwan. You know, lots of toys made in Taiwan, made in Taiwan. So you, I have this weird image of Taiwan between like never ending factory and the same time, like why so much beauty and nature is here at the same time. Mm -hmm. So that was my, my, my first image of Taiwan. Why do you choose to come to Taiwan? I'm from Poland, but like, I kind of felt like, uh, I mean, I like my country, I mean, I love my country, but it just always felt like there was the whole world outside, right? So like staying in one place kind of limits you and your possibilities. So because of this, I always want to go, whenever I have opportunity to go somewhere, just go. So in high school, we have a student exchange with the city in France. So like French people come to our town, we come to their town, we live there and you try life in different country, you know? So I went to university and well as Erasmus exchange so I go to Portugal to one year and then you know I have like holidays so I work you know for a while in in Netherlands and then go to UK and like I want to like see more and more so it's a time like I have to do my master right so I actually applied to many schools and I got a I got a scholarship to do master in uh, in Italy northern Italy but I was like dude but like Italy is like it's like it's like Portugal, but like a little different, you know? It's, it's not gonna be that exciting for me. Mm -hmm. So I just decided to buy a ticket and fly to Hong Kong and see what happens, you know? So I, I, I gave up on my scholarship then. And so then I go to Hong Kong and this is actually where I have like first like, like a cultural shock, you know? It was like, I had like lots of Asian friends before, but like once you really go to Asia, the life is different, right? Like the smell, like especially like in Hong Kong, you have similar weather like in Taiwan. It's like very humid and hot, and this is never like experienced in Europe. Mm -hmm. And e even though like I was before like in Turkey or like Northern Africa, it's like so totally different, you know. So Hong Kong was fun, but uh, I didn't like it that much, you know. So like then I moved to China, and China was like China was wild, you know, like. Uh, like, you know, this is like, like Hong Kong, there's like, there is like cultural shock, but it's like this much, you know, but, like, but China, this is like the full thing, you know? So yes, you, you like, you see dogs on the market, you know? You see like very weird animals being eaten, like some, I don't know, crickets, like some insects. The biggest cultural shock is like the, the weirdest image I have in my mind was like the, the mother pulling down the pants of the child and asking him to use, you know, use like a trash can in a, in a, in a, in a train station as a toilet, you know, in front of everyone. So she was like holding him this way. So that was like the weirdest thing I saw in China at that time. And, uh, but like in general, I like there. But then my friend from from Poland, he was like, "Man, like I live in China before. I live now in Taiwan. Like just come here. Like you're gonna like everything more, and everything gonna be better, and it's gonna be more fun, and the quality of life is better. And just trust me." Many people ask if you have any cultural shock coming to Taiwan, and I say, "I, I first time I arrived to Taiwan, I felt like back home." Like I never been in Taiwan before, but like everything was so normal and so calm and so like it just felt cozy here. You know, people are so friendly 
and everything is just like so normal like back home so it's very weird experience to, ex to describe but mm -hmm. first time I came to Taiwan I felt like I've been here all my life already you've been to many European countries yeah. and some of these Asian countries what stands out most about Taiwan compared to these countries if you live in Europe, like you, 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 there's many, many. It's just like very often there's a division between northern Europe and eastern Europe. Uh, sorry, northern and southern Europe, right? People are like very efficient, very work-related, very you know, very focused on things. At the same time, the quality of food is kind of bad, and people are very cold, and they just you know they don't talk to each other. But then on the other side in the south of Europe, you have this very relaxed vibe, right? Like people are friendly, they're gonna talk to you on the street, they're gonna ask you questions, like they're gonna just chat you out. People sometimes, they're not so like uh, effective when it comes to work, you know? They, they're like more relaxed, they take it easy, right? Mm -hmm. Sometimes they're late or something, which wouldn't be a case in the north in most cases. Obviously the food quality is better, you know, there's more sunny days, people are more happy, you know, like smiling more. So this is the thing that you like usually see Europe, this, this two ways, right? Mm -hmm. Taiwan is actually like best of both worlds, you know? You know, the weather is nice here, the food is fantastic, but people are still hardworking and efficient and they're very nice to each other. Mm -hmm. So there is not too many places in a world like this. If you, for example, go to Philippines, the people are very friendly, very nice. And if you go like to small towns, you, you're going to feel this vibe. But obviously it's not so developed like here, right? At the same time, if you go to Japan, you know, everything is like very developed, the cities are very, everything is like clean and nice. It's similar to Taiwan, but you would feel like people are a bit colder, right? Mm -hmm. So Taiwan is just like a perfect, you know, spot between those two places. Like all the good things from, from the developed countries, at the same time, all the good things from friendly southern countries where people like just help each other and talk to each other. Yeah, interesting. Five things mm -hmm. you wish you knew before you come to Taiwan. Taiwan is very often associated with bad things abroad, mm -hmm. which is a big mistake and which is a big lie. Mostly it's about possibility of a war here, which is like not really everyday life. And nobody really, you know, have this kind of vibe here if you live here, right? The second thing is obviously typhoon and earthquakes. Like people keep talking about earthquakes, like this is something that obviously Earthquakes and typhoons are dangerous things, but I think the government and people handle it pretty well. You know, when a typhoon is coming, you know, they shut out the schools, so people shouldn't be commuting. Mm -hmm. And the buildings and technology here behind them is, is very top-notch. So, you know, even with the, you know, heaviest earthquakes, like, there is not too much damage. I mean, comparing to some other countries in this situation, like, there would be way more, you know, casualties than in Taiwan. It's this kind of thing that peop the, the media likes to talk about this, mm -hmm. like the news likes to talk about this, but it's, it's, a, it's a situation like, okay, we are scared of flying airplanes because there might be airplane disaster, but a chance of, you know, having accident on the way to the airport versus having an accident on a plane is like, I don't know, 10 times higher. Mm -hmm. And definitely, yeah, Taiwan is very overseen, you know, like other... Other people think about, uh, you know, like people fly to Asia, they fly to Thailand, they fly to Japan, and well, recently maybe South Korea because of the of the K-pop. It's kind of like, uh, but Taiwan is like, uh, it's not really on the map for like travelers, you know, unless somebody is like the person who's traveling 50 countries. So they just take countries and they come to Taiwan or they have family here or they have friends here or they, you know, study here or work here. Mm -hmm. But apart from that, like Taiwan is not often like uh, seen as a tourism, like tourist destinations, which is, which is a pity because I think it has some spectacular places like the, the mountains and the east coast. It's really like top notch. But yeah, this is this is a pity. You here for eleven years. Yeah. When you come to Taiwan, do you have this intention of staying this long? No, when I come here, I just think it's gonna be another place. I'm gonna stay for a while and see how it is. Just, you know, try it out, like, you know, try the water. But actually, you know, once I arrived here, like this place, like ticked, you know, all the things I wanted in my life, you know, it has a good weather, it has like good food, it has friendly people, it is safe. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there is potential here to really do some business, right? Mm -hmm. 
So that's why I, I picked Taiwan and I was like, I didn't plan to stay here, but like since everything is fine here, then why not? You know? um, how is it like living in Taiwan mm -hmm. as a foreigner in general? I think it's I think it's very nice. People can spot you, okay? They know you are different and they assume you don't speak Chinese and and sometimes like, you know, even if you're like eleven years here, you know, somebody gonna come to you at the AGSR station and ask if you're lost, you know. I lived here like most of my adult life, okay? So lots of experiences I hadn't have, you know, back home or other countries I had in Taiwan for the first time and I think they all went very smooth and very nice. For example, you know, I got like dengue fever two times in Taiwan. And, and like, okay, so I go to hospital, I feel like I'm gonna die. And, you know, I asked the doctor, you know, is there like any, any medicine for that? You know, what's gonna happen? And doctors say, there's no medicine for dengue, you know. <laughs> but it, it, it's a fact, there's no medicine for dengue itself. Mm -hmm. There's medicine for like, you know, everything around dengue, like the temperature and stuff. Mm -hmm. But like, you know, the point is like, uh, you know, whenever you need a doctor, the doctor is here. You, you want to do the driving test, you can just figure it out how to do it. It's straightforward, you know. If you want to, you know, start something in Taiwan, you just have to find out how to do it and it, and it, and it just works. It's very, very simple. I think life in Taiwan is actually pretty simple because the, there are obviously rules, but if people know that there is something wrong with the rules, they're going to help you to, you know, navigate there. In Taiwan, it's just like very easy and, you know, very straightforward. So this is one of the things for sure. If you read any, I don't know, business slash success slash happiness book, one of the chapters says, surround yourself with people who have good beliefs. There are some foreigners who like, you know, just live here and, you know, every day they're like wasted, they drink, you know, they don't have any goals, they just like survive in Taiwan. And if you, if you surround yourself with this kind of people who don't want to do anything, any improvement, you're going to come up shortly with some beliefs like, yes, this is bad, everybody's wrong, the government sucks, mm -hmm. people are racist, you know, and you're just going to keep repeating that stuff until it's going to be in your head. Mm -hmm. But if you surround with your people who have different beliefs, okay, I believe that everybody can achieve anything they want. I believe that, you know, the things are the way they are, you cannot change them, but, you know, there's always way. If it's really your belief in this is your goal, this is your dream, you can pursue it. And if you put enough work and enough, you know, uh, effort in it and time, you're going to achieve it and later you're going to be happy. I believe things are easier for Taiwanese, uh, sorry, for, for foreigners who are married to Taiwanese mm -hmm. because you actually are closer to the culture, right? Mm -hmm. But uh, the most important thing is, is what's in your head and what you believe. So this is very Taiwanese way of thinking, okay? There is, a, there is a, somebody open a nightstand at the market, they sell this, I see lots of clients, I do the same. I have lots of clients. Mm -hmm. And not talking here about copying each other, but the thing is, if you do right thing, you're gonna have the same result. Mm -hmm. So it's the same in Taiwan. If you, if you want like, I mean, if you wanna start something, you do it right way, you're gonna have right outcome. Mm -hmm. You just have to work on it. And yeah, like life in, life in Taiwan is always adventure. Obviously, like, like it's like in the different stages of your life, you're interested in, in something else, right? Mm -hmm. Before I was so into waterfalls, like every week, you know, I go to like Pindong and like ride a scooter there and like discover all the waterfalls around. Mm -hmm. And obviously now it's my, my, like I'm a father of two kids. So like, you know, my life is a little different, but I, I love the fact that in Taiwan, there are so many, I mean, the weather is great. So we can go out almost every day. So the kids have this experience of playing outdoors like every day. They go to the water, to the swimming pools, to lakes, like once a week, you know, which for me in Poland, that was the case only in the summer. Yeah, apart from like the swimming classes, maybe that, that was like all year long. And then it's just amazing because you can be outdoors with your kids. They can have fun and it's just, like you can you know and really like feel like parenting in Taiwan is such a nice experience so this is yeah this is for sure like there is always something new to discover for me and most of those things are good surprises to me mm -hmm. like most of the outcomes is like very positive and very happy if you are to change anything in Taiwan what would it be 
I think, you know, Taiwan is this kind of good mix. In other countries, they actually allow foreigners to change their countries. And the outcome, it's not very the best. Like, if you talk to some people in Western Europe, they're not very happy with, like, you know, immigrants changing their country. Applying rules from other countries in your country. Mm -hmm. This is, like, so, like, if you agree to live in some place and you know people fought for this place you know there is blood involved and there is lots of work for like generations you know Taiwan wasn't that great like you know before people really start working here very very hard on it and they work on their wealthy and they work according to their values and their history mm -hmm. uh, you come here and tell people no you're gonna do this thing my way and this way this is very like impolite I think so I think maybe just let it be the way it is. But I think Taiwanese people do the things their way. So the way is protecting economy and jobs at the same time, not just like jumping on a, on a you know, okay, we need to go this direction because everybody goes this direction. Like Taiwanese are gonna like wait a bit, they see what happens and you know, and the things kind of work, you know, like if it comes to like GDP now Taiwan per capita is richer than Japan, Korea. Mm -hmm. So maybe it's actually correct this way, right? Mm -hmm. They're doing something right. Yeah. What is one or two main cultural difference between Taiwan and Poland? So one of the those, those like little differences is like, uh, you know, like in Taiwan, yes means maybe, and maybe means no because people never want to offend you and they don't want to like refuse anything to you so they're not going to directly say no they're going to they're going to walk around the topic sometimes they wouldn't be 100% honest just to protect your feelings right and uh, where whereas in like in, in in Poland or like most like countries around people would say directly no or no way or this is not going to happen but in Taiwan going to say maybe 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 so this is like one of the differences for sure. And what I love, you know, about Taiwan is people might have different views, different preferences, especially when it comes to politics or something. But when it comes to family, they just sit down together by one table mm -hmm. and they eat together and there is no fights, you know. If you are to introduce any police culture to Taiwanese, mm -hmm. What part of police culture would you like to introduce? I, I think the, the, the funniest thing and like most entertaining for Taiwanese is the fact that Polish people eat dumplings and they eat them a lot. And so they just have different skin, you know, like the, 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 the dough is different a bit. But the most like interesting or like maybe disgusting is the fact we put sometimes fruit inside the dumplings. Fruit? Yeah, I mean like a sweet dessert. So like you're gonna eat like dumplings with blueberries or dumplings with strawberries with like sweet cream on it. So that is like very scary for Taiwanese, but it's actually as a child, it's like my, my best memories, you know, like a summer day and a grandma cooks you like dumplings with blueberries, you know, and like obviously you top it with a little sugar or something, it's like, yeah. Have you, can you prepare this? Yeah, yeah, I, I prepare it to Taiwanese, they, they cannot handle it. <laughs> they just, they just like, it's just out of their comfort zone too much. <laughs> 11 years in Taiwan, how is your Chinese? Hi ha, hi ha, what will I put you there, bu hao, that's it. Tabu 在你的环境跟那个台湾人,我觉得应该是世界最好的地方可以学习中文 mm -hmm. Do you have anything else to tell Taiwanese people? Taiwanese people should, you know, go out more often, see other places Every time you go abroad, you know, like you, like, you learn what is great about Taiwan And a few years ago I, I fly back to Poland This is the moment like I felt like I missed Taiwan after like, you know, 10 minutes being home The point is like to see it you know, you cannot live here in Taiwan. It's like living in a bubble, you know? You have to go out and you have to get your something lost abroad. And then you're gonna appreciate coming back to Taiwan. Like, yeah, this is such a great place we live, yeah, you know? That's right. Okay, um, thank you very much. Thank you, that was great. Hope you continue to prosper here in Taiwan. Yeah, thank you so much. It was great. Thank okay. you.